Today is Friday, December 6, 2019. My name is Edna Sussman. I'm a reference librarian here at the Half Hollow Hills Community Library in Dix Hills, New York. We're interviewing William Urianic, a Marine Corps veteran during the Korean conflict. As part of our Veterans Testimonial Project and in collaboration with the Library of Congress's Veterans History Project. Thank you so much, Bill, for your service and for participating in our project today. Bill, where and when were you born? I was born in New York City, March 30th, 1930. And who were your parents, their names, and their occupations? My occupation, your, I was a your parents. electrician. Your, your dad? Yes. And what was his name? William, William Sr. Okay. And my mother was uh, Bertha Urianic, yeah. And uh, I was an apprentice electrician, and then I became a journeyman electrician in 1958 after okay. I got out of the Marine Corps. You did? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And did your mom, was she a stay-at-home mom? Yes. Homemaker? Yes. And did you have any siblings? No. no. So what did you do before you entered the service? I was an apprentice electrician. Oh, wow. Yeah. How long do you do that for usually? Um, apprentice electrician is five-year apprenticeship. Yeah. Uh, and the, the fifth year, you go out and do small jobs on your own. Okay. Yeah. Now, you said your dad also? Yes, my He's, dad was an electrician too. And that's uh, why you did that? Yes. He taught, well, he talked me, he kind of talked me into it, yeah. Were you in business together? No, no. I was, I worked for contractors in New York City. Oh, okay. And I worked on some of the largest jobs in, in, in New York City. I, I worked at the World Trade Center for almost 10 years. Okay. I wow. did the uh, decorative lighting for the, uh, for the World's Fair on the, uh, George uh, Triborough Bridge wow. and also the uh, White Stone Bridge. Wow. Yeah, That's yeah. So that was White Stone Bridge, I, I felt was the best job I ever had as an electrician. Why do you say that? Yeah. Well, it was a challenge to climb up the cable, that. up the bridge, and uh, after I after I started to do it, it was second second nature. You didn't I, mind. Yeah, I I just loved the job. Really yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. That was before you went to the service. Yes. No, I'm sorry. After. After. after yes. Okay. So, uh, which branch of the military did you serve again? Mm -hmm. Which branch were you in again? I was in the Marine Corps. Marine Corps and engineers. And did did you enlist or were you drafted? I was drafted, but. I volunteered for the Marine Corps when we went down to Whitehall Street. Uh, every fifth one there was going into the Marines, but they also asked if anybody was willing to volunteer to take the Marine. And my uncle was, my father's brother was in, I believe it was around 1916, 1917, and then my cousin was in 1943. He was on Guam during the Second World War. So. I said, might as well keep it in the family. Very so nice. that, so I, wow. I picked the Marine Corps. Yeah. Was your uncle in World War II he served? I no, mean, one, he, one. He, my cousin was in World War II, yes. Uh, and my, your uncle was in World War I? No, you know what? I don't really know that uh -huh. because we never really got to talk about that. Mm -hmm. You know, the only thing is he always used to say he was in the Philippines during the Philippine uprising, mm -hmm. and I, I, I can't get any more information mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Did your was your dad in the service? No, my my dad missed it because of his age. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Uh, what happened when you departed from training camp and during your early days of training? Where did well, you go and how? Well, after, after boot camp, I went to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Where was boot camp? In uh, uh, South Carolina, Power Island, South Carolina. And then after that, we went to, I went to school there. After finishing school in Camp Lejeune, then I was transferred to Camp Pendleton in California, mm -hmm. and I spent 16 months in Camp Pendleton. Was that additional training? Or? Yes, yes, constantly, yes. So once you were done with boot camp, did they give you a choice of what type of field you were? No, they told you where you were going oh, go they did. to go. Oh, yes. <laughs> you, 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 they, they didn't give you a choice. <laughs> were you okay with that? 
Yes, yes. So they, they wanted you to be like electrical? Theory. Yes, yes. They needed, when they formed the 3rd Marine Division, when the Korean War was still on, and a lot of people don't know that if the Korean War didn't end, the 3rd Marine Division was going to go in to support the 1st Marine Division. But the Korean War ended, but we were all set to go in. In fact, everything went to Guam, and they were stationed in Guam. You uh, went to Guam? No, I didn't go. Uh, oh. I, I was supposed to go to Guam, but like I say, it ended. My time was up, so I got discharged. Okay, so you then, after boot camp, you spent 16 months at Camp Pendleton? Yes. Doing, yeah. was it, what were you doing? Well, there? it was the, actually a training of the, of the Marine Division. Mm -hmm. You know, we went, we went on, we went on maneuvers, mm -hmm. we went aboard ship, we made a landing on the beach, mm -hmm. you know, so it was just like you were going into combat. You right, know? sure, yeah. you had to learn everything. Everything, yes. Defense and... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what was the basic like? How was it adjusting to the food and the uh, well, all of that barracks? Boot camp was a li a little di bit different than when you went to when I went to Camp Pendleton because uh, when when you were in boot camp they put it on your tray and that was it and make sure you ate everything they gave you. Really? You know? Oh yeah. Oh, they were very strict about that. Why? Wow. And then of course once. I got to the 3rd Marine Division. It was a little different. You, you had a little a little more choice of, of the food, but I, I never complained about the food. Food yeah. was okay? Yeah, food was okay as far as I was concerned. Yeah. Do, you, do you remember your instructors? What were they like? Well, my, the, my instructor in boot camp, I, grad, I went to high school with him. You did, really? Yes. With my senior DI in boot camp, I went to high school with, and when I got off the bus in Paris Island, and I looked at him, and I says, oh, my God, this guy I went to school with. And that was it. Nothing was ever said oh. until about the, the last week in boot camp. Uh, I was called into the Quonset hut, and he started questioning me. He asked me where I was from, what school I went. Oh, yeah, he knew. Oh, he knew. But he, he just made sure that he, he was letting me know at that point that he remembered me, Yeah, you know. Okay. And he asked me quite a few questions. And uh, it was, that was it until we graduated. Once we graduated, it was a, like night and day, you How know. So? Yeah. Uh, well, they weren't screaming at you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh. They were talking to you like a human being. Oh, they really do scream. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. I, uh, they, wow. they they get notes and notes with you, you know. And uh, there are certain things when you, even till today, there are certain things that happen in boot camp I'll never forget, you know. Uh, I remember one day we were standing in the company street at attention and there was a mosquito on my cheek, and the D.I. saw it there. What's and, D.I.? Uh, Sergeant, Sergeant Alberts. That wasn't the one I went to school with. This oh. was the one that was really tough on us. Well, what's D.I. stand for? Drill instructor. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, uh, he looked at me and he said, you're an addict, that mosquito don't eat much, right? So, of course, you're trying to get rid of it, but you can't move. And about eh, maybe two or three minutes later, he come over and he give me a smack. He killed it, but he he built it right on the side of my Jeez. face. Wow! So, oh so yeah. you weren't allowed to move. To no, no, you just stood there and took it. Wow! <laughs> oh yeah. What What are the things at boot camp? Do you remember? Well, you know, first of all, when you got to boot camp, from the day you got off the bus, you ran constantly. No matter where you went, you went to mess hall, you went to wherever you went, you went to classes, you ran, you right. know, to get you in shape. Right. Yeah, yeah. But we ran for basically 10 weeks. The only time you didn't run when you were at, uh, at the rifle range, because they wanted everybody to qualify with the, with the M1 rifle. Mm -hmm. yeah. Had you ever used any weapons before? No, no. So, so they train you. Do you oh, really yes. know what you're doing? Uh, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. they trained you, and and I guess it was the right thing to do, especially when you when you had no 
no training at all. They trained you the way you want. They wanted you to be trained, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. And every and every Marine is considered a rifleman. Really? Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. So you can defend yourselves and your yes. your buddies, yeah. Yeah. if need be. I mm -hmm. guess that's the rationale, probably. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, so. Did, so after the boot camp, when you went to Pendleton, what kind of specialized training did you have? Well, it was, uh, you went on maneuvers, and like um, the one time we were on maneuvers, we had a big generator, and we had to supply power to the kitchens that were in the field, you know, for the refrigeration and, and things like that. So we supplied all the electric that they needed uh, on maneuvers. So that was the training in case you went into combat. You know. I see. How, how do you supply electric if, some, if you're in the middle of a field? Well, we have a big generator. A a diesel generator. Yes, big. They, they were big. Really? You know, they were about probably 15 to 18 feet long. They yeah. stood about seven foot high, uh -huh. you know, and you had to pull them with a big truck, of course, you know. So wherever <clears throat> there was Marine Station to live mm -hmm. uh, in the field, that's, yeah. well, they yeah. were followed by this yeah. truck with a generator. So yeah. they this also supplied yeah. hot water? Yeah, well, the engine, being in the engineers, you, you had a, that was your, that was our job to supply electric to whoever needed it, you know. And when you went on the maneuvers, they told you who needed it, who didn't need it. Okay. Mm. So where did you go for maneuvers? Uh, up in the mountains in California. Mm. Yeah. And also on the beach because uh, Camp Pendleton was right on the Pacific Ocean. Oh. You know, it was just a, uh, the, the, the base actually started just on the other side of, of the road. And, the, and that was the biggest Marine base was Camp Pendleton. Mm -hmm. And they had uh, a section there, what they called Camp Delmar, where that's where they trained you to land on the beach with the landing barges and they, mm -hmm. are, and they put uh, uh, artificial reefs out so that you can come on to, onto the beach, mm -hmm. you know, bring your trucks and, and the generators onto the beach. And we had to be the first, almost the first ones in there because we had to set up the floodlight unit to light up the beach so the rest of them could come, come, come wow. aboard the beach. Yeah. Wow. How many people in one maneuver like that? Uh, or like in your unit for the Well, engineers? our unit was about, about 40 men. Uh, in our unit, but that was just the electrician. Then you had water supply. You had the different. Yeah, oh, you wow. had the guys that drove the trucks. They had their own unit. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I guess, I guess the division is probably twenty thousand men. You know. Oh yeah. gee. Yeah. Oh but, yeah. But not all traveling together. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. So where else did you go? Did you travel abroad? No. No. You stayed pretty much in California? Yes, yeah, yeah. I was, like I say, I was 16 months in California. It was real nice. The nice. weather was good. You really? Know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> were you able to come home? At that point, you weren't... Yes, I, I came home. I came home, I believe, twice from Camp from Camp Pendleton. Your you know. folks were still in New York? Well, I came home to get engaged to be married. <laughs> well, that, wait, how did you... You knew her before you went over? No. Oh. No, this is a story that a lot of people can't believe. Okay. But what happened was my cousin was married to her cousin. Okay. And when I was in boot camp, my cousin sent me her name and address. So I wrote to her, and she wrote to me. Mm -hmm. So we wrote while I was in boot camp. We wrote back oh. and forth. And you'd never oh. met yet? No, no. Uh, I came home on boot leave, and I met her for the first time. We went out on our, our first date, and then I had to go back. My 10 days was up. So we, we met uh, a group of us from New York that were all going back back down to Paris Island to be transferred. Uh, and one of the couples that was with us, uh, 
mentioned that they had gotten engaged while he was home. So I turned to Justine and I said, would you like to get engaged for Christmas? Oh, and, wow. she said, and she said, yes, and we got engaged for Christmas. Wow. How long had you known each other? Basically, a date, six hours. You're kidding. <laughs> no. Wow. No, no. And she said yes. Yes, she said yes. Very we nice. were married for 60 years. Wow. Yeah. So after you got engaged, you, you had to go back. To yes, yes. So uh, when well, she stayed, she stayed in New York, and then the last six months of my tour, she came out to California, and we had a small apartment, and we lived off the base for the last six months. Oh, yeah. that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Wow, I guess it was love at first sight. <laughs> yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> that's great, great story. Wow. And you had children? Yes, I had three children, two daughters and a son. Nice. And I have four grandchildren. And I have four great grandchildren. Wow. Yeah. Were any of your kids or grandchildren great in the service? Well, my one, my uh, granddaughter, she's married to a, a Navy man who's a pilot in, oh. in in the Navy. She's right now in uh, Virginia Beach. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. But wow. that's the only one that had uh, anything to do with service. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So. Uh, adapting to military life was okay for you? Yes. So, okay. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little more about California when you, you were there. What was your, uh, what were your duties like? Well, uh, basically keeping all the equipment up to date because once you run it for a certain amount of time, you had to do maintenance on it. So you had to make sure that all your equipment was. If they turned around tomorrow and said, listen, you got to go take the equipment here and do something with it, it better be able to run it and, and produce what it's supposed to produce. Where do you get all your, how do you keep supplies handy for that? Well, they, they have a regular supply depot that you, you got your supplies from when you needed them. Yeah. The officers took, basically took care of that. I yeah. see. Yeah. So you also, you said you were training all the time. So mm -hmm. was there new equipment coming out or? Just no, you know what? The time we were there, basically, it was the standard equipment, the generators, the, the floodlight units. That's what we had to maintain and, t and take good care of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at your base, you didn't see any uh, injured coming back from, no, from no, the, no, abroad or anything? No, no. <clears throat> um, how did you stay in touch with family and friends? There was no uh, Internet back then. No. <laughs> well, yeah. Once in a while, you, you you phone them, you know, you you call them, but basically it was mostly by letter. Yeah. You know, you you were writing, you were probably, probably writing two or three letters every week home. Oh. You know. Were you allowed to tell them where you were? Yes. Oh, yes. they yes. knew where yeah, you were. Yeah, they knew where we were. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what kind of friendships and camaraderie did you form while serving, and with whom? Well, there were. I had a couple of friends. Uh, after a while, you kind of uh, lose contact with them. But uh, I know one, uh, Jody Strickland. Uh, he was really a good friend of mine, and we kept in contact for quite a few years after I got out of service. Oh, you yeah. did those things. Yeah, he stayed in service. He wound up, when I met him, he was a sergeant, and the last time I spoke with him, he was already, he was a major in Marine Corps. He no worked kidding. his way up, yes. So he stayed yeah. in lifer. Yeah. Yes, but the job he had, I wouldn't want. His job was, uh, he was stationed in Boston, and when somebody got killed in Vietnam, he had to go on go to the parents or the, or the wife yeah. and, and notify them that they were that they were killed in, in, wow. in, in combat. Yeah. Really that tough. was I asked him many a time, I said, Jody, how do you do yeah. it? He's just tough. Yeah. yeah. Did they when your time so what year did you go in? I went in I went in nineteen fifty one to nineteen fifty three. Fifty three. Yeah. So when you were ready to um, when your time was up did they want you to stay in? They yes, they offered. They offered uh, if I stayed in, they would up me in rank. I would have. Oh. I would have made staff sergeant at the time. Yeah, yeah. You didn't yeah. want to do that. No, you know I. You I were knew married I, already. Uh, then. Yes, my wife was pregnant too. Okay. So. Uh, I wanted to get home. Get home. Yeah. <laughs>
So uh, how did you get home from California? What we flew you? home, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Uh, um, do you remember what you might have done off duty for recreation when you were stationed? You know, well, we especially when, when my wife was out there, uh, most of the time we met at our house, and oh. we always on weekends we were off, so we always had company. Nice. My wife loved company. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, returning home, you flew. You said yes. You flew. And how were you received by family and friends? Oh, they were glad to see you. <laughs> I bet. Especially my uncle, who was in the Marines. Uh, you know, when I came home on boot camp, uh, he was my shadow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <nice. laughs> Did he? Was he in uh, a long time? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I don't know how long he was in. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we we never talked about that too much. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, back then, too, I don't think uh, they wanted to talk too much. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, have you remained in touch with any fellow veterans? Not not really. You know, we kind of lost contact there for a while because I've been out for so many years already. Sure. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, how, how was it readjusting to civilian life? Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't too difficult, yeah, you know, uh, because, like I said, my wife was pregnant, we were going to have a child, uh, I was still an apprentice, you know. Oh, you I, were. oh yes. You I, went back to the same... What happened was, when I got out of service, I went back into the union, but I, they, they picked me up from where I left off, oh, okay. you know, so uh, I still had four years apprenticeship after I got out, you know. Left? You're yes, yes. Left to do? Yes. Mm -hmm. So how many years total is an apprenticeship? Five years. Five. Mm. So after you did that, and you, you get paid while you're an apprentice. Mm -hmm. So then what did you do after the apprenticeship was up? Well, then I became a journeyman, and then you, you could work any place in New York City on any type of job, you know. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, I was on some big jobs in New York City, yeah. How did you get jobs? I mean, you weren't with a company. Well, uh, you went to the union, and the union assigned you. Uh, yeah. Oh, nice. Yes, yes. They, they, they did all the assigning of the jobs, you know. Mm -hmm. And how long were you uh, a journeyman? Well, total uh, in the union, 43 years. No kidding. No. Wow. No. You must know a lot about electricity. Yeah, but you know what? Today is so much different than when I left because I'm out 20 some odd years already. Okay. And yeah. You know, it's, uh, I, I talked to some, some of the fellows that I had as an apprentice and uh, when I talk to them, it's it's a total different ball game out there now. Really? You know? Well, yeah. a lot of fields too. Everything's yeah. become yeah. computers have gotten oh, yes. in the mix, right? There was no such thing as no. a computer <laughs> then. Right. Well, you had to know a lot. Mm. Well, you still do now, but in yeah. a different way. Yes. Um, so, are you? Uh, tell me again. I know before we started this, what veterans organizations you belong to? Well, I belong to Marine Corps League. And I belong to the American Legion, and I also attend another because you can only belong to one one Marine Corps, uh, rather uh, American Legion, oh. but you can attend anyone you because you're a member, you know. Mm -hmm. So I I also go to the Elmont American Legion. Very uh, nice. Yeah. 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 In fact, they do our. Uh Color guard, our flag ceremony. Oh yes, in May. Yeah. yes, sure. they they do a lot. That's yeah. a big organization. Yeah. They have their own building, and they have a well. They have over 200 members. Mm -hmm. You know, where the um, many all of we only have about 40 members. So okay. it's, a, it's a little different. You know? uh, the post we use is Green Lawn. Mm. They they do it. Yeah. And I know they're always wanting more members. Mm. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> And most of the, most of the posts are not getting it. The young fellows, the young fellows don't do it anymore no. because they got families, and I can understand. When they're busy, yeah. yeah. When they get a little older, when they get a little older, uh, that, that's when they join. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, how do you think your military experiences affected your life? Well, like I like I always tell everybody, I was an only child. I was a spoiled brat. No, really? Yes, I was. I have to admit that. But 
after being in the Marines, you know, no one was spoiled. Is that right? Spoiled well, how did that happen? Well, how does that work? Why? Uh, again, you know, because uh, when when you're in the Marines, the, the the training is so intense that you don't have the time to think about other things, you know. And uh, uh, like I say, I, I enjoyed being a Marine. You did? Yeah. Yes, I did. What did you, know. you enjoy about it? Uh, you know, it was some of the travel, being in California, uh, being North, before I went in the Marines, I was never out of New York or New Jersey. But then, you know, when I was, I was in South Carolina, North Carolina, I was in California. So I, I saw a little bit of the United States while I was in the service. Nice, yeah. very yeah. nice. What are some life lessons you learned from your military service? Uh, I think one of the big things is, and I learned that, partially from my dad and the Marine Corps. If you decide to do something, do it right at, at your best ability. And uh, with the bottles and cans, I think that yeah, was part of it. Yeah, I want to know about that. Yeah, so what, yeah. is, what project is that? Well, I started, I started that. I was coming back from a fundraiser, and uh, I happened to see two cans laying on the side of the road. When was that? you remember what year? No, 2004. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I said, that's a dime. And then I started, because on Tuesday was recycle day, mm -hmm. so I, I used to get up at 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning and go around getting bottles and cans, and uh, I was doing probably 100, 75 to 150 a week. And this last year, last year I did 3,000 a week, Jeez. and this year we're doing about 3,300 a week. No kidding. Yeah. How do you do that? Wow. Well, it's basically, I, I, the schools, I go to some of the schools, and some of the schools bring them to my house, plus people know what I do, they come and drop them off at my house. And yeah. what happens when you redeem them? Well, what, <clears throat> what I do is, I put, I put the money into a special checking account, and then when we learn about different veterans, like Christopher Levy, James Byler, uh, 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 that have lost limbs, we make donations to them. And, oh, that's uh, wonderful. We, wow. we, Christopher Levy, I think we gave him almost $11,000. Wow. James Byler was over $11,000. Uh, Brendan... Uh, Morocco, we just did that a couple of weeks ago. We gave him over $7,000. This yeah. is only from the return of the cans? Basically, yes. But wow. we do get, I did get some people would donate, and when they found out who it was going to, mm -hmm. they would send me checks in their name or my name, mm -hmm. but we, we always got the money to who who really deserved it. Very and nice. we don't give any money to an organization where at least 90% of the money doesn't go to the veterans. If it's less than 90%, we don't donate to them. Very we nice. want it to be over 90%, mm -hmm. because I don't want to give money that we earn uh, to somebody who's sitting in an office right, uh, right. bringing a big salary. Yeah. How do you find these vets that have been so severely injured? Well, most of the time, we. I've learned from being in a paper, you know, and uh, the the last one, Brendan, is through my daughter. Uh, her boss mentioned to him uh, uh, about him losing both his legs and both his arms, and she called me and I said, then we have to do something for him, which we did. You know? Where was he? Uh, how did that happen? Well, you know? uh, he was, in, from what I understand, he was in a Hummer in, I believe it was Iraq, and the Hummer got blown up, and he lost both his arms and both his legs, wow. and uh, he has transparent arms, uh, which uh, when I first met him, uh, his left hand is much better than his right hand, but he got maneuverability in both his arms and both his hands. Yeah, wow. yeah. He was the first one, from what I understand, he was the first one to get transplant arms, and uh, it took it took 13 hours 
It was on, uh, on the operating table for 13 hours. Oh, so uh, they're not prosthetics. It's yeah. a... No, no. It's they're a, female. They were from a female. Oh. Yeah. They match the color of the skin and all. Yeah. Oh. Amazing. So he's able to use his hands pretty yes. well? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Yeah. Does, the only thing is uh, he lost his legs very high up. Mm -hmm. And from what I understand, they won't give him artificial legs because if he falls and breaks his arms, he's going to start all over again. Oh. Yeah, so uh, he's basically in a wheelchair for the rest of his life, yeah. you know. He's probably a young guy. Yeah, yes, yeah. Well, that was wonderful. But what attitude, did. great attitude. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know which branch he was in? Yes, he was in the Army. Mm -hmm. He was a, so I believe he was a sergeant in the Army, yeah. Wow. So you continue to do this every every week. You redeem cans. Uh, every week, every week. How many? I mean, do you deal with different schools near you. Yes. Uh, let's see. There's one school in Baldwin, and there's three schools in Elmont, and one school in Mineola. So you get a lot of stuff. Oh, from them. oh yes, yes, yeah. Uh, basically, why well, I go to Dutch Broadway School once a week on a Wednesday. And I do anywhere from 400 to 700 a week. Uh, and cans? I mean, bottles, bottles and cans. And cans. Yes, combination. Yeah. Do the kids help you? Oh yes. Oh, the kids go around to. Well, what they have is they have uh, containers in each one of the classrooms, and the kids bring them, put them in there, and then on Wednesday morning, they they have a. A group of 30, I believe, 32 children. They go around to all the classrooms and they bring, they bring all the bottles and cans down to the gymnasium, and they take out the bottles that don't don't have deposits. So all the ones I guess have deposits. Oh, that's already yeah. separated. For they you. separate them. Yes. That's yeah. Great. You know, wow. So they separate them, and then I take them home, and then because the, some of them are mixed cans and bottles, plastic, I sort them because the fellow that I have that comes to pick them up, he asked me to sort them. That I put the plastics in one bag, cans in another, and glass in another. So okay. the way. And then he comes and picks them up and he pays me off. So who's, how, how did you get to him? He, I, I learned from him from my grandson. His, his son and my grandson were friends, yeah. and he happened to mention it one day to him that, that I pick them up. So he says, my father goes around and he gathers them basically with a big truck. So he called where, me up. Where does he bring them? I mean... Well, he has a warehouse, and then he separates them, and he gives them to Pepsi people, oh. Coke, yeah, water bottles. But he gets yeah. the five cents and passes it to Well, he gets eight and a half cents. Oh, I see. Yeah, he gets eight and a half cents, you know. <laughs> so he's got to, you know, to do that, he's got to make some money. Sure, sure. Yeah. So yeah. he gives you. So you don't yeah. have to go to... The next machine at Costco oh, and return. I was doing that at the beginning. Were you really? Yeah. Oh, sometimes I was there for three hours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm but, glad you got some help. That's oh a yes. Huge I couldn't. Job. I couldn't do it today. Really? It would be impossible. How can you, if you get thirty-three hundred in a week, how can you go to a supermarket no. and feed them in a machine? You're right. It, it, uh, absolutely impossible. Right. Yeah. Now these people at the school, their teachers and students, they return their cans and bottles. Oh, there? the teachers are all involved. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, they're all involved. They know what it, where, where, where the money is going, mm -hmm. and uh, you know so. There's no complaints. What a wonderful yeah. thing. How did yeah. you think to do this? Yeah. You know what? It keeps me busy. <laughs> you know, especially after so. my wife passed away. Uh, I live alone, you know, and uh, what do you do? You yeah. know, this at least it keeps me doing something. Oh, this is know. a big job. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, but uh, it's a wonderful thing you're yeah, doing. Yeah, it's probably. Uh, uh, in a week's time, I, I I probably spend six to eight hours a week on it. You That's know. it. Oh, I would yeah, have thought yeah, more. Yeah. But you probably know exactly uh, some, what you're doing. Sometimes it's more. You yeah. know, uh, like uh, the day after the day after Thanksgiving, uh, the Baldwin School. Called, the teacher at the boarding school called me up. She says, "I have some bottles and cans for you. Can I bring them?" Oh. I says, "Yeah." 
never realizing what it was. It was over 4,000. My God. Yeah, 4,000, a truck and a car full. Yeah. Oh. And, uh, How come so, it built up? <laughs> yeah. It's, they just drove up and bring them to me, and then oh. I separated them. And I was at that day, I didn't get done until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I bet. Yeah, but wow. kept me busy. Yeah. Kept me busy. Man. What a wonderful what a wonderful thing you do for yeah, people. Yeah. Hmm. Um, okay, so now back to the last few questions we have. How has your military service impacted your feelings about war and the military in general? Well, you know what? Uh, I make some motions about it. You know, I don't know if we really should be doing what we are doing now, but I understand the other part of it is if if we don't do if we don't maintain some of this, some of these countries will take over and we'll be in big trouble. You know, so you you, you got to maintain what you're doing and watch out for yourself. Yeah. yeah. What message would you like to leave for future generations that might view this interview? Uh, that's a tough one. That's a <laughs> tough one. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I kind of have mixed emotions with that. Would I want my grandchildren to? I think it would be partially a good experience for them. To join the military? Yeah, to have, you know, do something. I'm not saying two years. But I think maybe six to eight months of military, I think, would help a lot of these kids mm -hmm. realize what you have to go through and what you have to do to maintain the living that you have today. That's right. Uh, Very good point. Yeah. yeah. Were you ever injured or hospitalized during mm, your service? No, thank God, oh God. no. <laughs> Is there anything we missed or haven't discussed, Bill, that you'd like to add? Anything at all? Yeah, I don't think so. I think we covered it pretty well. Did we? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I think so. Okay. Well, thank you so much. We really, really appreciate it. And all you're doing with the cans, too, and your service. Thank you. <laughs>